The secret of this knife is not because of the cutting edge, because of the point. This one's a bit blunt. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Today we are checking out the Fairburn Sykes fighting knife or the commando dagger as it might also be referred to. Now we did a video previously with the British Army and their bayonet training from Evo's Media and that was very cool to check out. I know in the video of course I said uh, you probably couldn't shoot through the bayonets and I was totally wrong on that so I do appreciate you guys fact checking me on that one. And later in that video we we're checking out more hand-to-hand -hand fighting in the sense of martial arts. And again, that's everything you would see in the US military, especially the US Marines. We do bayonet training, we do martial arts, we have our Marine Corps martial arts program. And in that, we have knife fighting. And it's not totally in depth, you know, it has general counters to, to knife fighting if you don't have a knife yourself. It has general, you know, strikes and moves you can use with a knife. But from what I've seen is the, the commando dagger or the, the Fairburn Sykes knife, is meant to be used completely different from how we would utilize that in the US military. So what I want to do is check out this video. I think it's a World War II vet explaining how to properly use it, or at least how they've been taught to use it. So again, it is a stiletto style knife, so it's it's meant to puncture really well. I think more specifically, like puncture in between the ribs. So it, it's got a very specific purpose. It's more for like the, the silent killing um, sort of aspect of, of knife fighting, not so much like a utility fighting knife as you would see with the Marine Corps K-Bar. So I do have my K-Bar right here. This is just a, this is like the smaller version. There is a full seven inch blade version that I do have back in the States. That's way more beat up than this one. But yeah, this is just the one I have here because this is the only one I could have here in Korea. But again, a lot of Marines have K-Bars. They used to issue these out. And uh, it's a fantastic knife. It's a good fighting knife, um, and I'll explain that, I guess, later on in the video. But it's also a great utility, utility knife because uh, it's very tough, very durable. I use this as a hammer a lot. So we'll explain the differences between the, uh, the commando dagger and then this knife and how you would actually utilize uh, the two. So I know the commando dagger was developed by two Brits, I think, in Shanghai in 1940 or 1941. It was introduced in service in 1941, but I believe it was created by two folk who were in the Shanghai uh, police, the municipal police. So it's a very interesting background for, for knife development for sure, but it was introduced during World War II and put in use during World War II. Again, as like their fighting knife, sort of like a, a commando. I mean, it is a commando dagger, so it was meant for those more silent kills. So right off the bat, we do have the dif those differences, but again, I wanna check out this video and see how it really how it really compares to how you would utilize the uh, Marine Corps K-Bar, or how you how you maybe should utilize it. Fairburn Sykes fighting knife, FS knife, field service knife. Uh, length, possibly six inches and six inches. Some blades were nine inches. That's a long the blade. The secret of this knife is not because of the cutting edge, because of the point. This one's a bit blunt. <laughs> Normally, it's a needle point, and you don't need any weight or thrust when you're going to use it. If I'm gonna... Again, so it wasn't meant to, to be like, okay, this combatant versus this combatant, where you're slashing and you really need to utilize it like that. It's meant to penetrate and do its job very quickly. It's meant to just try and kill quickly, not so much as like a defensive uh, sort of weapon. So we're already seeing that right here, just based off, it, off uh, its design. I'm going into somebody, and I'm going to use this. I don't have to push it forward. Just grab him and pull him onto the knife. Got it? <laughs> this is badass. You don't hold the knife this way. Wrong. It's held between the thumb and the forefinger. So I'll say real quick, you see that a bunch in military movies and it's just so inaccurate. You would never utilize a knife like this unless you're trying to be like John Rambo or some crazy dude. Or if you just know that you know, you're trying to scare a dude off. but. You're not, you're not going to fight like that, especially with a commando dagger. Got the palm of the hand to go around it. And if you're going towards a person, you don't just walk towards it, you change hands very slowly. So that you don't know which hand you're going to have the knife in, right? But mostly, if you're going to do a job on a sentry, <laughs> you don't do what they say, lift his chin up and cut his throat like that. Yes, lift his chin up, but put the knife in by the jugular vein, which is both sides of the throat. 
push it through, punch it forward. <laughs> you rip out the lot. All right, so you can see this dude has been there and done that. He's very desensitized to what he's saying. And I wonder if the camera crew is just getting a little bit triggered by what he's saying. But I'm loving it. It's, it's very fun and it's very realistic. Again, the, the knife was designed for a certain purpose. You're not going to be doing all that movie stuff. It's meant to do certain things. And this dude seems like he, he knows how to use it to the best of its potential. Bit of a messy job, but that's it. <laughs> Right, there is a way of stopping a knife, and I'll tell you this, when there's an acne carry, a bloke in my section disputed the fact that it could or couldn't be done. I said, it could. He said, no, you can't. If a bloke's coming in with a knife and he's like that, he said, you'd have to be very, very quick to do it. I said, look, with training and practice, it's possible. Well, it come to such a point that evening, talking about it, that somebody said, with the heat, with the sheaf on, Prove it. So this bloke took the knife, <laughs> and I stood there, and he came at me like this, the way they said not to do it, right? So he came at me like that, and as his arm went up, I knew he was gonna come down, so I blocked it with the elbow. You never grab it, mm -hmm. block it with the elbow, right? The other hand comes down the back there, and you take a pace forward, right? Woof. Okay, so that's exactly how we would do it as well. So if someone was coming at you, and they're doing you know, something crazy like this, something you wouldn't want to do. This is very easy to block. As long as you, you know, close the distance and you watch out for the blade, you just need to get a forearm around here and then you just wrap your arm around and take them down like that. So you'd block so their arm would be like this and then you can just come down so their arm starts getting back or bent back. You come underneath and then you can just wrench their arm. And that's, I guess that's what he's saying right here is you just bend the arm back, come underneath and just twist it so they can actually drop the knife or you know you can take it from them. So it's very easy. You have all these defenses set up for certain knife attacks, but that's by far the easiest and the most reliable as far as, you know yeah, you might take a, a little bit of a cut, but if you can close it and then wrap them up, that's it, that's game over. But if someone is actually using it properly, it's almost impossible to really wrap their arm up like that, especially if they're being defensive about where they're putting it. Down, and I broke his arm. I said, see, it does work. But the upshot was, in the morning... <laughs> Did he actually break his arm? see Charlie Vaughan, <laughs> who was a commandant of the uh, commando training school. And Charlie hmm. said to this bloke, who's got his arm in a sling, he'd been sick oh. he said to him, you don't think our methods of training work? And this bloke, well, well yes, sir, well, but... Um, and Charlie said, and he looked at me and he says, you think our methods of training are good? I said, yes, sir, I've just proved it. He turned around this bloke with a broken arm and said, you can pack your kit, get off the camp, you're RTU'd. Boom. Wow. Got no faith in the training, leave it out. But nice. that is a Mark III knife, right? And these channels are not for what people say, let the blood run through. It's just a grip mm -hmm. in there, but, because that's something. And it, used right, used well, it's a good weapon for close quarter combat. So I can appreciate how he's not just trying to dramatize it and make it just sound super badass. Like, yeah, this is this is so the blood can drain out. You have the same thing with the K-bars. You have this this fuller right here, this like indent. People are like, oh yeah, that's so the blood can pull there and it doesn't get on your wrist or your hand. And that's why you have these grooves as well. Now, it's just to, to take away some of the weight in the blade. And it, it's nice when you have a professional who actually knows the knife and can appreciate it, who are, who's actually saying it accurately. So again, this is the K-Bar. This came out in 1942, and this was created by some Marine officers. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which department they were actually um, in at the time, but they worked with the Union Cutlery Company, and they tried to produce this because at the time, the Navy had their Mark I knife, and that was breaking all the time, so they wanted a more reliable knife. A lot of people were just using their own civilian knives, so that's why they uh, put forward this. Now, if you're not familiar with the term K-Bar, um, it wasn't originally called the K-Bar. The reason why it got that name, I think he got it in the early 1900s, but basically there was someone in Alaska, I think they took down a Kodiak bear with this particular knife, and they wrote a letter to the, the person who owned the company, the Union Cutlery Company, and they're just basically just explaining their story, 
and they didn't know English too well, so they wrote like K-A-B-A-R, and that's basically where the name K-Bar come from, because he was, he was trying to say kill a bear. So pretty badass name. Uh, again, these are still made in New York. They weren't originally made in, uh, in Olean, New York, but that's where they're made now, and that's where they've been made for a very long time. So this is a very uh, historic knife, and it hasn't changed much since it was used in World War II. Now, originally, the Marine Corps did have the um, the Raider stiletto, like the Marine Raider stiletto, which is basically a commando dagger. Before they actually got the K-Bar, that's what they were using. And again, the Navy was using their Mark I. So this was a very awesome uh, addition to the military at the time. Because again, it's a fighting knife, but it's also a utility knife. So it was good for you know chopping limbs. The bigger version was good for like chopping tree limbs and doing all that. And again, you could use this as a hammer because it's so tough. You know, it's made from very durable 1095 carbon steel. You know, it's got a stacked leather and, you know, they, they pressurize this leather really well. So it's very tight leather on the grip and they also use washers as well. And then they also uh, pinned the pommel in. So it's a very durable knife and that's why they really loved it during World War II. They actually issued this out to the Navy, I think, as a Mark II knife. And then they also issued it to the Army and, of course, the Marine Corps. And a lot of the Marines actually ended up getting the Navy version just because there wasn't enough Marine ones to go around. So this knife has a lot of history. But as far as the actual use of a knife, I guess I'll just have to demonstrate how we would actually use it in the Marine Corps. Okay, so hopefully I'm in frame well enough. And hopefully this new lapel mic actually works because my last one sort of crap the bed so again this is a k-bar you would generally have a a seven inch blade i think this one is a five inch blade might not even yeah probably about a five inch blade so you'd use a k-bar pretty much in a similar stance as how you'd use martial arts so in you know marine corps martial arts we have our our traditional fighting stance so it's just a normal fighting stance where you'd get a stance like this now you'd use the knife in a very similar way but instead of keeping it up here you'd keep it down here just so you know, the enemy can't reach out and try and manipulate your arm and try and you know, disarm you. So you'd have the knife down here. If you were going against someone else who also had a knife, you'd be blocking all that. Now that we do have counters to the knife, but generally you're not going to be using them when you have a knife yourself. So you have your general strike. So you, know, you got your forward and back diagonal slashes. That's very standard. You have some lunges. So when you would do it, you would punch it out, twist, and then rip. So it's kind of like what he was saying in his video where he would, you know, try and just rip it out whenever he actually gets a knife through their neck. So we do a very similar thing. That's generally what you're aiming for whenever you're doing this. You'd go out, punch to their neck, twist it, and then rip it out. And you can also do it the other way. So it's very basic, you know, fighting stances. There's also something called bulldogging, which is basically if you're pushing up against them and you're just trying to stab really quickly, that's just like a more aggressive way of handling it. But generally when you see people knife fighting, they're not really having a stance like this. Like he was saying, where you wanna keep the knife like in between your, your forefinger and your thumb, that's generally how you would see people knife fighting to where they would get a stance like this so their body is a much smaller target. In the military, you're just, you're so used to having a stance like this. And this is, you know, sort of defenses where, defensive where you have the knife down here but it's not as defensive as it could be because this arm is completely open for getting slashed. And I mean, you can try and like, you know, take their wrist or take their armpits or their, you know, their artery under their arm while you're doing this, but you're gonna get cut. I mean, you should expect to get cuts in a knife fight anyway, but it's, it's much more defensive and effective to use it like this where you're a smaller target, you can still protect your neck, but the only thing that they're gonna be going for or then they can be going for immediately is your arm and your wrist, but that's also what you're using to attack. So while they're going for it, you can make those attacks as well with this. So, you know, you're moving that target at the same time you're attacking them. So he was saying while you're moving up to them, you could switch hands. You can do a very similar thing where you can just, you know, move the blade around so they're not actually predicting where it's gonna be coming from. But generally you wanna have the blade pointed towards their face. So it's, it's harder for them to see because if you see the blade like this, it's a lot harder to track than if the blade is just like like this if you're doing some crazy stuff like this. So that's generally how you would see people fighting. But in the U.S. military, 
we have all this like really aggressive defensive stuff. And of course you have ninth defenses and I could go over that as well if you guys want, but it would basically just be the block like this, wrap up the arm like that. If they lunge, you can, you know, uh, I forgot what they called it, but you would jump back, grab their arm, you know, you could strike them there. You can do an arm bar if they do like a forward and reverse slash. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, but the Marine Corps isn't too big on knife fighting. And you do get into it a little bit more as you go up in belts, because you have your tan, gray, green, brown, black belts in the Marine Corps martial arts program. I got up to brown, but I, I will still say that it wasn't as far as I would have liked to go into as far as knife fighting. Knife fighting is a very awesome skill to have, especially when you can't have a, a firearm with you. So it's something that I wish the Marine Corps learned a little bit more about. So if you guys do any training with your commando daggers, because from what I've asked from my Royal Marine buddies, like, um, you know, Luke from Original Human, Leon from Bootnet Gamer, Ryan from Gendit Commando, it seems like you have to buy your own commando dagger. And now in the Marine Corps, you do have to buy your own K-Bar. It did used to get issued, but it seems like now if you're buying it, I'm not sure if you're getting the training. So if you guys could provide some insight as to how you actually train with your knife, and if it's actually integrated with your martial arts program, definitely let me know in that comment section, because I'd be interested to see how you guys actually manage the whole knife fighting uh, aspect. Especially Royal Marines, you know, they're, they're commandos as well, so they will have that commando dagger all over the place. So if you guys do get good training on that commando dagger, definitely let me know. Now in every military, there's gonna be some sort of like sword or what have you, like in the Marine Corps, we have the NCO sword that you would use for a lot of things. But I'm more curious about the knives uh, in this specific video. So if you guys in any other military actually utilize a specific knife, or if you have like a traditional knife design, of course we have the, the Gurkhas and their Kukri knife. That, that's another legendary knife, but if you guys have any other traditional knives in your specific militaries, you know, whether it be Finland, Norway, Sweden, or what have you, if you guys have any other traditional knives, let me know in the comment section, and also how you guys utilize them. And with the Commando Dagger, if you guys utilize those in a, a traditional sense as well, because I know for each Marine Corps birthday ball, we have a cake, and we cut the cake with our NCO swords, and sometimes they'll lift it up with the K-bar, they'll lift up the piece of cake, and they'll serve it to like the youngest Marine or the, the oldest Marine or what have you. So that was an interesting way of, of incorporating these old, you know, historic tools into, into what we do every year. So if you guys have any other practices like that, I know you guys do have your commando daggers on your uniforms. So that's a cool way to implement it. But if you implement it in any other way, I'd love to hear about that because it's cool to sort of keep the tradition alive and keep, you know, keep it in the, in the eye of the current Marines and the people still serving so they can ask questions and then learn the history of, of what this knife and what the NCO sword was actually used for. But that is about it for this video y'all. So definitely let me know what you think about this whole, I mean, it is a react video, but it's also me just sort of explaining how we would actually do it in the Marine Corps. So definitely let me, let me know what you think about these sort of uh, style of videos and let me know again, how you, how you guys actually handle your, your knife training, whether it be in the, the British military or abroad. I'd love to hear how you guys actually handle it and if you get some solid training offered to you because, again, it is a very awesome skill. But, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments section regardless. If you guys liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Definitely consider subscribing. But, again, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, but I'll see you all in the next one.